live streaming 6 pm I'll, I'll i'll start right you can start now well good evening students i hope you all had a wonderful paper today i am jay jay krishnan and i'll be speaking about english paper presentation now as you know tomorrow you have your english paper and i do understand that Students are all tensed up regarding what is to be written and how is to be written. So this is just the final touch up that I would like to give you today for your paper which is due tomorrow. So are we all ready for this paper? Yeah. So let's get started. Now as you all know, our English paper is divided into various sections. The first section includes something called as language study. What, what do we include in language study i'm sure you all by now know that language study deals with grammar related questions so here your entire language study is divided into three sections that is four plus four plus two the first set of four questions are said to be medium level questions the second set of four questions are said to be hard level question okay sorry the first set of question is said to be the easy level questions the second set is called the medium level question and the third one is a complex or a hard level question now let's understand how to we tackle them the first set in which you have one mark questions and how many questions would you have to attempt four they will give you five questions you don't have to attempt all the five However, we teachers always suggest you all to write five questions. Just in case one of them goes wrong, you will not be in loss. The second one, however, includes two marks. So you'll have to attempt. Great. Now let's see what all questions can we get in each of them. Okay. So can we look at the first type of questions? Now for one one mark questions, there are few things that I want you all to be thorough with. One is compound words. Okay, so two compound words I want you all to buy heart and keep it. Now what are compound words? Wherein you have one word which is a combination of two words. For example, something like moonlight. Now when I cut these words, I have two separate words. What are the two separate words? Moon and light, both having their individual meaning or rainbow for that matter. So I want all the students to at least remember two compound words and be ready with it. So that whenever you get this question, you can easily do it. So first one is compound word. The second set of questions that you will look at is. Okay. The second, the second set of question that we have is to identify an infinitive, gerund or participle. In this, mostly what you would get is infinitive. Now, you need to understand infinitive is nothing but 2 plus verb. So, whenever you have a sentence which has 2 plus verb in it, it would be infinitive. Now, I want you all to read the question carefully. It says pick out the infinitive. You need not underline it. So you would write down the statement, for example, I want to speak. Now in this, as you know, the infinitive here is to speak. So you would write 
to speak infinity. Are we clear with it? How are we going to write? You are not supposed to underline it. What you will be doing is you will pick it out and write. Same applies for gerund and past participle. Now, a quick revision of what gerund is and what past participle or present participle is. Gerund is nothing but verb plus ing or the ing form of the verb. You will always get it as the subject or the object. They act as nouns. So, gerunds will always perform the function of a noun and you can ask the question from what. So, whenever you ask the question from what and you get the answer, be assured that they are called as gerunds. After gerunds, you have present participle. Now, students usually get confused between a gerund and a present participle since both are verb plus ing. But you need to know that present participle are the ones that acts as an adjective. So, they are used to describe something in a sentence and not state whether it is an object or a subject. Now, please understand the minute differences between a gerund and a participle. So, the participle would always give you extra information whereas the gerund would perform the role of a subject or an object. I hope we all are clear with these things. Now, let us move on to the next set of questions that we have. Now, after gerund participle infinitive, the next thing that you need to know is okay, punctuation. Now, this is really an easy set of question where you see we have quotation marks to be used. I want you all to make a note of the quotation marks. So, it is like 6 and 9. So, the starting one and the ending one. Where will you use quotation marks? Whenever you have a dialogue being told in a sentence. Commas, I think we all know how a comma is to be used. Apostrophe is when you are showing position of something or maybe in a short form. For example, I'll. So, this comma that we put here is the apostrophe. As you all know, the first letter needs to be capitalized or if you are putting any proper noun in a sentence, you know, your name, the name of a place, wherever you have proper nouns, make sure that you would put it in capital letters. And finally, when you are ending it, you need to put a full stop. Apart from that, we also have question mark and explanation exclamation mark, which is to be made at the end of the statements. Now, please rewrite the sentence once again. And make sure that you are making the required changes and solving it. So, this is how you have to do it. After that, we have finding out the hidden word, wherein a word would be given. For example, imagination. Now, in this, from this big word, you have to make two words of four, four letters each. Now, each of the letters should be present in it. For example, I can make something called as nation. Yeah, and any any other thing that you think we can make it in this. Now, can we say image? I can say I M A G. What do you need after G? E. There is no E, so you cannot write. Again, again, very good. Can you see A A I N again? So in this way, whatever word you are making. The letters should be from this set only. You cannot repeat it. If you are repeating it, it should be already repeated in this. Otherwise, you cannot use it. So, please make a note of that as well. Finally, we have make a meaningful sentence by the given phrase. A phrase would be given from the textbook most of the time. You just have to use that phrase correctly in your sentence and frame sentence. And then finally, you have spot the error where the error could be most of the cases subject verb agreement something like the novel was publishing in 2005. So, what is the error? The novel was published or if at all I say they has done it before. They have done it before because it is they, right? So, it has to be plural. So, in this way, you get verb related things for spot the error, wherein there might be error in the usage of the verbs. 
okay now after that the next one is to identify the type of sentence now students mostly students get confused when it comes to identify the type of sentence here let me be very clear please stick to assertive imperative interrogative and exclamatory sentences we are not doing simple compound complex here where are we doing simple compound and complex we will do it in the two mark questions below not at this level okay so here you have to identify whether it's an assertive sentence whether it's an imperative sentence whether it's an interrogative sentence or whether it's an exclamatory sentence so these are the types that you would be looking at and finally complete the word chain now as you know the word chain could be of anything it could be of noun it could be of verbs it could be of adjective for example eat now here as you know eat is a verb now if at all i ask you to make four more verbs after that you would start with the last letter what is the last letter here t so what could be the next one talk would be a best example talk k kick is another one okay after kick knock why not it's all kk related words anyways and finally something like kill no no is also fine so in that way you come to know these are the words that are all verbs now students when you are using it in form of verbs see to it that you are not using ing form or not using the past tense form all of the verbs are in the base form okay and finally uh, okay nouns now if at all i say something like english what is the last one h now since it's noun it could be anything anything around you which you can name can be included in it you know you could write name of a person with h you could write hat you could write hand anything that comes to your mind so nouns are usually easy when in comparison with verb or adjective you might also get something called as an adjective for example um tall now you see tall is an adjective what what else can you write about long is an adjective very good g great is an adjective graceful is an adjective yes and from from t thin thin talkative tiny n and from n you can write new so these are adjectives always think of something that you would describe something like a tall building a long river a great magician you know a thin fellow a new book you know you always put an object after that and see whether it goes well only then it would be adjective please don't get confused between verbs adjectives and nouns so after that the next one that we have is to form participle with the last letter doubled now this again is something that i want you all to make a note of and go for the paper now when it comes to participles we already know that we have present participles and past participle present participle and past participle so what is present participle where you have verb plus ing and what is past participle which is the v3 form of the verb it could be en any ed form now when we look at present participle what is the condition here the last letter needs to be doubled so whenever you have something like swim what is the last letter m but when i say swimming how will you write it s w i m m i n g so swim and swimming so you don't have to write swim there you will only write swimming the next one for example sit what is the last letter t and when you put an i n g to it it would be sitting or for example hop hopping but can i use play why can't i use play because play with ing is just ing y is not double so this will not be used so when i say the last letter has to be doubled it means when you look at the base form of the verb in that the last letter should be doubled are we getting this okay 
Now, when we look at the past participle with the last letter doubled, you can have something called as, now when I say slap, slapped, S-L-A, P-P-E-D. If I say stop, stopped. So, in this way, these are three things, three, four things that you need to practice thoroughly and go. One is compound words. You know, just write down two compound words, remember them and use it. The second one would be present participle with the last letter double. And the third one would be past participle with the last letter double. One from these three, you will always find in the first set of questions. Apart from that, obviously, you will be focusing on gerund and participle, which are another important level of questions. Okay. Now, with this, we come to an end to the first set of questions, which is the easy level questions. Now, let's move on to the medium level questions. Now, when you look at the medium level questions, as the name suggests, they are a little more difficult than the easy level questions. In this, first and the foremost, you can get make sentences. In make sentences, they may give you something called as a homograph or a homophone. Now, let's understand what's a homophone and what's a homograph. As you know, homograph means same spellings. So, here the spellings would be same, but the meaning is different. So, one example is already given, bat. You know, one bat stands for the sport equipment and the other bat stands for a mammal, the bird. Now, if at all I say something like live, you know, one is live, like as we are live at this moment. And the second one is live. I live in Mumbai. So, you see, the spelling is same, but the pronunciation and meaning is different. Or, now when we come to homophone, what are homophones here? You have same sounds. So, in this, the sound would be same. For example, C. C and C. Or your piece and piece. You know, give me the piece of the cake. Or, you know, I would prefer peace over war. So, these are few examples that you may get as make sentence. These are easy one. Apart from that, there is one more thing that you can expect, which is to use the given word as noun or verb. For example, plant. Now, in this, I will make a sentence and write that, you know, plant gives us oxygen. Now, in this sentence, what is plant acting as? What is plant acting as? Noun. So, please write noun alongside. And the other plant, if I say plant again, I plant a tree every year. What is plant ending year for? Verb. So, this is how you would be writing two sentences wherein in one it acts as a noun and in the second one it is acting as a verb. So, please be very careful. This is very scoring provided by you understand how it has to be used. Now, move on to the next one. The next one is direct and indirect speech. We already have looked at various ways in which a speech can be converted into direct and indirect. You can expect any type of sentences here. It could be a question, it could be a normal statement, it could be anything. Just make sure that you are changing the tenses, changing the pronouns used and also changing the time in which it occurs. So, if you take note of these things, you will be able to convert it into the required form. Also, remember the comma would change to that. If you have said to given, you know, Rohan said to Sham something. So, whenever you have said to, what will you change it into? Told. And also remember, if you have some universal statements, 
there will be no change in the universal statements. If you have questions, remember we have also direct speeches when you have questions. As you know, there are two types of questions, WH questions and yes or no questions. So, if you have WH question, you will use the WH word followed by the subject followed by the verb. For example, if at all I have to give you an example, Rohan asked, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? So, the indirect speech of that would be, Rohan asked, asked what I was doing there. Can you see what and after that I would write the subject and then I would write the verb was. Are you getting it? How it works? So, please make a note of this. In questions, you always have verb first, then the subject. But when you change it into an indirect speech, you will always have to write the subject first, followed by the verb. That is why we do not put a question mark at the end in an indirect speech. Now, if you have yes or no questions, you will use the words if or whether. For example, Rohan asked Ram, are you okay or are you fine? So, what would be the indirect speech for it? Rohan asked Ram whether he was fine. Is will change into the past tense was, whether he was fine. Okay. So, please make sure that you are revising this. I know it might be a little difficult. Okay. Now, after indirect and direct speech, we have conversion of tenses. It could be identifying and converting them. Follow the tense table which is given to you. Be thorough with everything. Write whatever is asked. As you know, some few tricks that we can use is whenever you have continuous, what should come to your mind? Verb plus ing form. Whenever you have the perfect tense forms, you will have the verb have in some form used, you know, have, had, has plus the V3 form of the verb. If there is no V3 form of the verb, then please note it will not be a perfect tense, but it would be a simple past tense or a present tense. So, these are few tricks that you can remember. Finally, moving on to word register. Now, when we look at word register, a word would be given to you. And whatever is related to that word, you have to make a note of it. You might be asked to make a word register of eight words or four words. For example, if I say universe. So, whatever things comes to your mind, when you hear the word universe, you can make a note of it. That would be in this. Okay. And now, we move on to the last set of questions, which are challenging level of questions. Now, in this, when we look at the challenging level of questions, the first one, as we have already discussed, the usage of the word as noun and verb, we have discussed it with homophones and homographs in the previous question. Then you have degrees of comparison. We already have seen the two types of degree, that is, I mean, three types of degree with three categories, type 1, type 2 and type 3. So, you can either convert it into positive, comparative or superlative. Remember, in example, Nile is the longest river in the world and in comparative, you would say Nile is longer than any other river in the world and here you will start with no other river in the world is as long as Nile. Type 2 would be one of the, instead of the, it would be one of the. So, instead of any other, you will write many or most of the Nile is longer than many other rivers in the world and here you will write very few rivers in the world are as long as Nile. Always remember in positive the pattern is you will write the adjective in between and comparative you have the adjective first followed by than and in superlative, you have the followed by the adjective. This is the pattern that you need to follow. Make sure that you are using it in that way. Okay. 
Now after degrees of comparison, we have modal auxiliary, very important. You can easily score two marks in it. Here what you have to do is, you have to underline the modal and state its function. So if at all there is a sentence like, I can speak English. I can speak English. Now, as you know, the modal here is can. So, you would write down can, put a hyphen and write down the function that it shows, ability. Now, just in case you are not able to write down the function, even if you write can, you would be marked for it. So, please attempt this question. There is also a table which would have modals along with the functions given to you. Go through the table thoroughly so that you know what are the models and what are the functions of each of the model. The functions would change as per the usage in the sentence. Moving on to the next set of questions, which is analyze whether the subject, uh, whether the sentence is simple, compound and complex. Now, as I told you in this, if you have identified the sentence, the kind of the sentence, here what type of sentences you can expect? simple compound or complex and finally the last one is very rare but you can expect it where what would be given two words would be given and you have to use both the words in how many sentences one now students usually make a mistake here when they see two words they make two separate sentences please don't do that you shouldn't be making two separate sentences you have to use both the words in one meaningful sentence only. That also reminds me, when you have the words to be used as noun and verb, noun is fine, students would use it properly. For example, if I say cook, and if at all you have to use it as a noun, what would you say? Something like my cook is absent today, or my cook is not well, or my cook is tired, or my cook makes delicious food, etc. But when it comes to verb, students tend to use it as cooking, cooked, to cook, all this will go wrong. Please understand, you have to use it only as cook, the base form of the verb. Maybe add an S if at all you are using singular subject. For example, he cooks well, that is also correct. But if at all you make it ing or the past tense or even the infinitive form of the verb cook, it will not be accepted and it would be considered as wrong. So please make a note of it, don't lose marks here. So that brings us to the end of first session, I mean the first set of questions which is grammar. Sir, sir how to identify the uh, degrees of comparison and change it? Please. Okay, how to identify the degrees of comparison, now when you look at the degrees of comparison. I have already given you this. You already have this. The type, like you know, if at all it's a positive sentence, you would have as adjective as. Now, if at all I say something like, very few students in the class are as smart as him. Which degree is it in? Positive. How do you know it's positive? because you see the word as smart as him. So remember this, this will help you to identify whether it's positive, comparative or superlative. And how to change it? Remember we have these two categories. Now when I say very few students in the class are as smart as him, which type is it? Can you see it's the second type? Very few. So when you turn it into comparative, what will you say? He is? smarter than many other students in the class and the third one he is one of the smartest student in the class okay is that fine great now let's move on to now as you see as you see the next one that we have is textual passages now your textual passage comes for 10 marks now in this we need to know that there are questions at the start. So you would have some questions at the start, then you would have the passage and then you will have some questions after the passage. So the first set of question that you have here 
is called as simple factual question as you can see here simple factual question now what do you mean by simple factual questions the answers are directly given so you can expect something like a fill in the blanks there or match the column or true or false anything and where will you get the answers from the passage directly the second type of question is a little more complicated that is why we call it as complex factual the answer is again there in the passage but the thing is it might not be in one place you will have to gather it from different places club into an answer and write it down now there are chances that you might not be getting full two marks here it depends on how well you have framed but here if the answers are correct it is a sure shot two mark because as the name suggests it's simple factual you know it would have questions like what when why etc etc one or two words answer that way and question number three and four for both the passage type of question is one is based on vocabulary and one is based on grammar now when it comes to vocabulary you will have things like pick a word from the passage which means or you know use a suffix or prefix and give the opposite of that word something which is related to usage of words and meanings and the second one when it comes to contextual grammar it could be any of the grammar related activity that you have done however the sentences would be from the passage in the first grammar question that we saw you can expect something from the text but here the sentences would only come from the passage given and finally the last set of question is your personal response question students please make it a habit to write something in the personal response question i would always advise you all to be positive and just not write one simple no and end of the answer write something express yourself also if possible use quotations that would give you a little more extra mark compared to the others now the passage question is same for both whether it's seen or unseen the pattern is same you will have five marks uh, five questions of two marks each which sums up to 10 marks now finally we move on to something called as your poetry section now the poetry also has the same thing you would have a question first then you would have the poem and then you have two three questions below that but here the difference is instead of personal response the last question is based on poetic device now in poetic device you can expect two questions one is fos that is your figures of speech and the second one could be rhyme scheme so these are two things that you can expect also the questions would come from where from the poem which is given for the reading i mean the passage and you can expect questions from that only after poetry passage the second thing that you need to look at is appreciation of the poem now as you can see here the marks are given for five things here okay it's five things here that is the title the poet the central idea the rhyme scheme or the figure of speech i want you to only focus on these things and nothing more as per the new pattern you have only five marks for appreciation and in this five mark you will only get these things are we clear with it so make sure that you are writing the title the poet's name you will also explain what is the central idea in one or two lines after that you can write the rhyme scheme and figures of speech however what is important is to make sure that you are writing this entire thing in form of a paragraph many students despite telling tend to write it in point form you don't have to the question itself says that you have to write it in a paragraph form so please stick to the instructions given and write it in a paragraph form only now moving on to the next one the non-textual passage now in non-textual passage as i told you the first set of question is the same wherein you have five questions of two marks each which is same as the scene passage now another thing that you have along with along with the scene passage is summary 
Now, when you have to write a summary, make sure that the summary should be written in just one paragraph. Also, make sure that your summary contains title. So, you would write down the title and after the title, whatever is given in the passage, pick out the main points, pick out the important ideas and write it in a paragraph form. What all can you avoid? Avoid using examples, avoid using statistical data, avoid using quotations or direct quotes. These things you can avoid and only stick to the main idea of the passage. Also, I would suggest if you can pick out one or two lines from each paragraph because as you know, every paragraph would be denoting a new idea. So pick out the main idea and club it into it and give a title. So it should be one title and one para. Keep it precise and short. Don't go overboard and write one page or one and a half page long paragraphs. Thank you. And after that, we move on to the writing skills part. Now, in your writing skill part, as you know, we have five writing skills to attempt. Now, in this five writing skills, there are some writing skills which are compulsory and there are some writing skills which in which you have option. For example, now if you see the first one letter is a compulsory question. However, the type of the letter that you write is optional. You can write either a formal letter or an informal letter. I am sure by now you are clear about the format. So please stick to the format which is provided to you and make sure that you are writing the format properly. When it comes to formal letter, just quickly looking at it, when you come to the formal letter, you know, you would be writing your address first, followed by date. Then you would write down the receiver's post and address. You know, first it should be the principal, the secretary, comma, followed by the address. Then you would write down the subject. Then you would write down the salutation, you know, res uh, respected sir or respected ma'am. Write down three paragraphs. And then finally, a complimentary closure, yours sincerely, faithfully, etc. Now, this would be formal letter. Now, when it comes to informal letter, your informal letter would have only one address, that is your address followed by the date. And then you would write down your dear friend salutation, three paragraphs and yours lovingly. Now, what I want you all to do is there are few things that you need to make a note of. First one. There is no two finger space, as you all know, no two finger spacing, everything should start from the margin itself. Make sure that you are not leaving any two finger spaces. Now, since there is no two finger spacing, the second point would be to leave one line after every paragraph. So it would always be better if you could leave line after paragraphs. Why? Because if you don't leave lines, what would happen? It would look like one big paragraph. So make sure that you are leaving lines. So you could write down the address, leave a line, date. Now leaving lines is just to make the letter look more presentable. So make sure that you are leaving proper lines and writing it. Formal letter could be precise, one page would do. But when it comes to an informal letter, it should be about one and a half page because you have to explain what she is doing. In the second para, you would come to the main topic and finally you get much to the uncle, aunt, whoever is talking, etc. So you see your informal letter would be a little more lengthy. Also, when you're writing it in your board, make sure you're writing it from the left hand side so that you have both the sides with you. So if at all, this is your answer booklet. You start your letter from this side so that you can continue writing it on this side. Otherwise, what happens is now instead, okay, let's think that you have your booklet and you have written something here. If you start your letter from here, if it goes to the next page, it would not look proper. So if this page is left, you can draw a line, leave the page, turn the page make sure that both the pages are used for the letter. You might not, I mean, you can say thank you here and write something here, that's fine. But then make sure that you are using it in a way that you have two sided pages and not one and one behind. That would be 
a problem. This is just for the convenience of paper correction and also to make sure that you know the things properly. So I hope we are clear with the first set of writing skill which is letter. Now after letter, the second thing that we have is information transfer. Now when it comes to information transfer, it is verbal to non-verbal or non-verbal to verbal. Now here again you have option, you can select anyone. Students usually tend to do verbal to non-verbal. Now what all things you can expect in non-verbal? You can get a tree diagram as you can see here. You can get a flow chart. It could be a note making or a table form, anything. So know what each of this is. So if at all I say tree diagram, it would be something like this, the main idea. It branches out to some other ideas and it branches further. So this would be a tree diagram wherein you have main idea branching out to multiple ideas. On the other hand, if we say something like a flow chart. Now, how is a tree diagram different from a flow chart? In flow chart, the instructions or the ideas flow in one specific flow, you know, in a unidirectional manner. You could do it like this or you could also do it sideways, doesn't matter. But the idea is there would be information and there would be arrow which shows the direction in which the information is flowing. This is usually done to write steps. Now, if at all I have to say uh, steps to save a document in a word file. So what are the steps? First select the document, you know, save as, give the name, save, etc, etc. So these are for step. And if at all it's a table, the table would already be given. You just have to fill in. And if nothing is given, you can use your own brain and draw a table and write down whatever the details are. Make sure that you're not writing long sentences and you're sticking to small phrases only, covering the main idea. Now, when it comes to non-verbal to verbal, you have to write one para on it, but use connectors or modifiers or something called as, you know, language cohesive devices. So, you know, something like first of all, to begin with, secondly, in comparison to, you know, and so that the information looks well connected. It shouldn't be like a small standard student saying that, you know, water is used 90% for this, 1% for that, 2% for that. So there should be some analysis. You can say the maximum percentage of water is used for so and so. Just next to that, we have the second major usage of water, which is, you know, the difference between the usage of water is so and so. In that way, make it a more, you know, interesting paragraph to read, wherein you're not just stating what it is, you're also analyzing. However, you shouldn't be adding any extra information there. With whatever is given, use connectors, you know, first of all, secondly, link it, the first sentence to the second sentence. So anyways, as we all say, the first one, like which is verbal to non-verbal would be easy. And I would suggest you to stick to that. However, just in case you feel this is not possible or it's difficult, then always you can go for the second one. Give a title and write it in one para. What is leaflet? Now leaflet is called as tourist leaflet. It was there earlier in the olden syllabus, older syllabus, you had something called as a leaflet, wherein, you know, you would have things like where to go, how to travel, what are the special, what are the special uh, features of that place and what is the speciality, the food, etc, etc. So that is called as a tourist leaflet. There is a doubt. Okay. What, what is the doubt there? Could you please read the doubt? Yes, yes. So when it comes to writing the address, at the end of the first line, you will put a full stop and a comma and then so on and so forth. It is, it is very important. Otherwise, we may cut marks. So please stick to the punctuation given. Okay. Is there any other doubt? Okay. Great. Now, after this, we move on to the second, uh, the next one, which is view and counter view. I would ask you to overlook the markings here because 
the pattern here is of 100 marks paper which was last year however the majority of the things are here so when it comes to view and counter view or speech so when it comes to view and counter view a specific view would be given and you will be asked to write a counter view on that so first of all you need to understand when we say view we are speaking in support or in favor of that idea but when we say counter view what are we doing we are opposing it we are going against it so that is what we need to look at now sometimes they would give you the view and ask you to write the view only so in that you could use the points given however sometimes what they do is they would give you the view and ask you to write a counter view on the given topic so whatever is the topic given you will write the opposite of that how would you do that first of all make a suitable title now obviously you can add not to the given title and make a title but i would always suggest to make your own title by adding something for example if at all i say something like attendance should be compulsory for students now what will this be attendance should be compulsory for students it would be view now if at all i have to write a counter view what would you say attendance should not be compulsory or attendance should not be mandatory something like that so and you would write the entire idea in one paragraph only so this paragraph will cover all the points given and that's all you are not supposed to write two three paragraphs because the question itself says to write it in one proper paragraph so write a title and write it in one paragraph whatever you are supporting now if you don't want to do view counter view the second thing that we can look at is speech now as you know speech is comparatively easy wherein you have a topic given now in speech there would be three paragraphs that you would write so the first para we always call it as introduction wherein you would be introducing yourself and the topic that is given the second para should have the main points concerned with the topic and in the third para you would have conclusion now when you are writing the intro make sure that you are not revealing your name no name should come also you can use some trips tips like using a quotation using a question or have done and in this way it would make your speech look more captivating so that when we read the speech we feel okay the speech is written now you see the speeches are usually given on simple normal topics something like pollution something like save nature etc so make sure that you know some details about it have some two three quotations ready with you two three examples or you know you can share that you had been to delhi recently and you would say that how you were affected by air pollution there so in this way this will enhance the quality of your speech so that brings us to the end of the second writing skill now we move on to the third one uh, X Y Z yes instead of name you can write X Y Z wherever name has to be mentioned if the name is not given please stick to X Y Z what is the other comment there is it compul uh, we did that it is compulsory uh, sir we finished I mean it's compulsory to use punctuation marks we have already done okay is it okay to write I am a student of class 10th yes whenever there is an introduction given you can introduce you know on this occasion of sometimes most of the time it would be given in the question you know on account of environmental day celebration write a speech on save earth so you would say that you know on this occasion of environmental day I would like to speak on the topic etc etc you can uh, as it's a board paper make sure that you are not revealing your identity anywhere which is mandatory okay now after the view counter view thing 
the next thing that we have is to write either a report or expansion report or expansion now when it comes to report and expansion what you would do is you see in report you have a set format to follow wherein you would start from the headline followed by the staff reporter by the staff reporter and then you would write down the place month and the date and after writing this you can write down two paras that would be fine now when you are writing these paras make sure that you are writing all of it in past tense forms and also make sure that you are avoiding any usages of personal pronouns no one should be using personal pronouns anywhere in the report no personal comments whatsoever it has to be strictly very formal when you are writing it in form of a report also when we are writing the first para make sure that you are answering all the wh questions that would give you enough content to write for example what is the event where did it take place why how who all are involved etc etc so the maximum information could be in the first para in second para you are just explaining the information a little further that is what you have to do now coming to expansion of idea again the format would be the title that is the proverb that you are going to write it could be anything now it could be a proverb it could be a maxim it could be a quotation it could be slogan anything whenever you write an explanation uh, expansion of idea make sure that you are writing the title in the first line after that i would suggest you to write three paras wherein in the first para you are explaining it in your own words simple words second para you can give examples or write some story and in the third para you can conclude now the idea behind each of these is to have enough content to write now students usually fall short of content that is why we stick to things like examples and story think of an example think of a story and also when you write them what happens is the proverb becomes much more easier and clear for us to understand and finally when you are concluding think whether there is some other proverb connected to it now for example if at all i give you the proverb a stitch in time saves nine now when you are writing in conclusion you can say that it is similar to the proverb prevention is better than cure which has the same idea more or less so think of some parallel proverbs that you can think of and incorporate in the last para so these are the two things that you are expected to write here i feel both are fine expansion if you know the proverb please go for it it would be scoring but if you don't know the proverb well then there is no other option but to stick to the report sometimes now if you see nowadays reports they come with headlines already given so the headline is already given you just have to write the content and that would help you to score marks okay now the last set of question that we have is to develop a story now there is no hard and fast rule in writing a story that you need to look at in the story is focus on the character try to build the characters as and when possible also have some events you know let there be some action which is happening in your story don't make it just a descriptive thing have some action and if possible let's also give some morals or some learning that you get from the story towards the end now the story comes in two ways one is narrate narrating an example uh, an experience or the second one would be to develop a story now in narrate what happens is the pronoun i would be used you know you would get things like that day onwards i realized how important family is or i realized the value of time and what happens in develop a story you would be given with a name for example rohan you know a name of a person so this would be from the third person point of view and this story is from the first person point of view like how you had 
Anil's story, the thief story, which is written in the first person point of view. And you had three questions, you know, which is written from the third person point of view. Before writing the story, I would like you to use the initial three, four minutes to think exactly what are you going to write. Have a blueprint in your mind and then start writing the story. It shouldn't be that you start writing and in between you go on adding the thing which would spoil the entire flow of the story. Keep a steady flow throughout the story, arrange the ideas wherever possible and make sure that it ends in whatever lines are given. Also please stick to the lines given. If a line is given, either the starting or the ending, whatever line is given, you have to stick to that line only, no other things. And that is how we would come. That brings us to the end of this session. Now, as I have always told you, when it comes to English paper, it doesn't, is, is there a question? Is there a doubt uh, here? Draw tree diagram whether we use pen or pencil. Okay. Now, I would say that whatever diagrams you have to draw, please stick to pencil only and writing should be done with pen. I know in Hindi and Marathi, they might have told you to draw with pen and write with pen. But in English, we prefer drawing with pencils and writing with pen. That is better. Whatever it is, whether it's tree diagram, flow chart, web, whatever. One more. Uh, is it okay to write a horror story? Will, make, uh, will marks be given? Yes, story could be of any sort. As long as the characters and the event and the action is well aligned, if you are sticking to the lines given, then any story would do. It's after all to enhance the creativity of the student, to see how creative you are. That's all? Okay, great. So, wishing you all the best. Hope you will write well and score good marks. Thank you. Thank you, students. All the best to everyone, all the ones watching video as well.